This is Paul Wilson. And Chris Hemke. You're listening to the Diesel Performance Podcast. Merry fucking Christmas. Yeah, the edited version. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> um, Chris, you, you know, I was, I was recently thinking about way back when this show started um, and, and all of the, the changes and some of the highlights and, and even the lowlights uh, that we've been through in this podcast. And one thing I can say for sure is that it has literally always been fun. Um, I really, really enjoy doing this show. I, I, I certainly can't, can't tell you listeners how much I love hearing from you guys, uh, whether it's through the, the podcast Facebook group or whether it's through just the Facebook page or emails or, or whatever phone calls. Uh, it really means a lot to us. It definitely, I know personally, it helps keep my motivation up to keep doing 50 plus episodes every year. Yeah, I, I think the the biggest eye opener for me with the us gaining the traction was probably um, Ultimate Callout Challenge 2018. So being there 2018, 2019, and seeing the growth and seeing the acceptance in the industry is is probably the biggest things for myself. Um, and looking at where we are today, especially through everything through 2020, uh, you know, we put a, we put a good amount of effort in this and it, uh, it definitely is well recepted, which that's keep, that keeps us going. Right, Paul? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, some of the other things that keep us going guys is our sponsors, uh, calibrated power, Duramax tuner, Axergy performance, WC fab, um, these, these are the companies that actually make the show possible for us to, to functionally execute. Uh, we, we would not be able to produce the show um, without our sponsors. Uh, we also, we genuinely enjoy working with these guys. Uh, so if there's something you can do to give Exergy, WC Fab, Duramax Tuner a shout out, um, it means a lot to us. I'm sure it'll mean a lot to them as well. So, so please do so. Uh, with this being Christmas, like literally, Christmas. Uh, we're not going to wrap up a ton of time today, guys, in our intro. Uh, like we had mentioned last week, we're going to jump into a Diesel Insights episode here. And then for the end of the year, uh, I am planning, and I don't think I've actually told you yet this, Chris. Um, but yeah, I am planning an end of year episode to release uh, right before uh, January 1st. So so last week of December there, we'll get one more show out for 2020. Um, it's a bit of a surprise, so I don't, I don't think I've told you or Justin yet uh, exactly what I have in the works, but I, I'm hoping it's something cool. Uh, for today, I, I just wanted to give the, those thank yous and a quick reminder to uh, jump onto the YouTube channel over at Duramax Tuner, check out this Diesel Insights video. Uh, Chris, you want to tell them a little bit about the, um, the topic we have today that we pulled from Diesel Insights? Yeah, it's a, it's a really popular one too, Paul, and it's Use Truck Health Check. You know, we get guys that call into the shop all the time. Hey, I want to pick your brain. I'm looking at a used truck. Can you help me out? Right? Yeah. Uh, looking for a little bit of guidance, looking for a little bit of, you know, awareness as to what to and what not to look for. Um, and the thing is, is, you know, five, seven, eight years ago, you know, the, the LB sevens and the LOIs, you know, they were, they were 10, 12, 12 years old. Now, you know, those LMLs and those newer trucks are, you know, 10 years old, they 12 years old. So it's good to have some awareness. You know, we always invite, if guys have questions, they can always call into the shop and ask. But I think this Diesel Insights video does a really nice job uh, with video and the audio that we're going to be doing. It just, it, it really, uh, it, it creates kind of like a, a, a path rather, um, or a game plan for anyone who is potentially looking at buying a used truck. Totally correct. It also, honestly, I think it has a couple of really hilarious sound bites in it. Um, guys, keep an, keep an ear out for Lil Pump and Helen Keller and shoot us a oh. comment over on the Facebook group about, about hearing those little gems. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to wrap up too much more time in this one, guys. Uh, we're really excited to talk to you next week. Have a very Merry Christmas and we will talk to you guys soon. For today, this has been Paul Wilson. And Chris Emke. Thanks for listening. Nick Pregnance with Duramax Tuner here on another installation of Diesel Insights. Today I have Anthony Brenini with me. Yep. What did you bring me? Well, I brought you an LB7 today to take a look at. I just recently sold my personal LB7, looking to get back into the diesel market. Um, this is one of my trucks of interest. 
Okay. Did you find this at Mika Auto Auctions? Uh, or just cruising a... Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace. I found this on Craigslist, so okay. I brought it in today to kind of take a once over and see what we can do with it. Okay. So on Diesel Insights today, our our topic is what to look for, right? So, young guy like yourself, Anthony, shows up, brings this sweet 2003-2004 LB7 in. On the brain, you're just like, <laughs> dude, 650 horsepower to build trans. Like, just, just tell me it's good so I can go to my credit union and pull the trigger. But you gotta, you gotta pull the reins back a little bit, right? We gotta look at it. Mm -hmm. What are we looking for? What do you notice? I mean, you pull this thing in here, Right off the bat, uh, I notice the intake. You that's notice a, the intake. It's the first thing I see. I okay. see a big old extension cord for the block heater kind of hanging Custom out there. Custom shit, yep. You know it. Um, K&N intake, filters kind of beat up. I notice there's a little... Clamp's not on there tight. Loose on the clamp. So, okay. Right off the bat, that's the first thing I see. Okay. Tells you a little something about the guy who owned the truck, mm -hmm. maybe, right? Yep. Why don't you grab that battery to shake it a little bit? Okay. Oh. Okay, yep. Yep. Might have to fix that. Yeah. What else? Anything else jumping out at you? Uh, it looks like there's a turbo replacement. Uh, I believe the owner said there's a Stealth 67 okay. that he purchased. Um, I see a downpipe on there as well. So uh, it's got some performance parts on it. It's got some mods to it, yeah. Okay, so it's got some attention to performance side. Solid. So we know the, we know some things about the previous owner, right? Dude likes to go fast. Mm -hmm. Dude doesn't really care if the battery's in there tight. Nope. Uh, I mean, I'm on this side. I see that there's you know a headlight piece hasn't been pushed all the way through the holes. We're using some tie wraps over here. Yeah. So, and then if you take a look down, you can see the bumper okay. as well. Okay, bumper's a little rough. Yeah. Okay, but let's let's talk mechanics, right? So mm -hmm. maybe this guy didn't own it for very long. He mm -hmm. did some performance work to it. He wants to unload it. We don't know why exactly. Mm -hmm. Maybe he was in the motor, maybe he wasn't, mm -hmm. right? So we want to know, yes, we, we know that the top end of the motor and the body work, not exactly perfect. Mm -hmm. But as far as as far as the engine, you know, what are we looking for here? What's the obvious stuff that we can check out? Right off the bat, what I'm looking for is any signs of leaks, whether it be oil, fuel, or trans fluid. Okay. Um, that's right off the bat. You know, I can see someone's installed a turbocharger, whether it be him or previous owner. Yep. Somebody's been in there. Okay. Um, there's talk of a injectors done in the truck as well as transmission. So parts have been moved around. Just want to okay. make sure everything's secure okay. and working as it should. Okay. So when I show up to look at a truck like this, I tell the guy, don't start the truck, don't move it from where it was parked, leave it sit, preferably a couple days, right? I'm gonna show up and I'll look underneath the truck. Is it wet? Is there oil obviously dripped off the truck? If there is, I know it has an oil leak. <laughs> I'm gonna pop the hood, I'm gonna look at the engine, see, is there evidence of an oil leak? Is there oil slung up here? Is there evidence of a blown engine, right? Usually when you blow an engine, oil goes all over the hood and the firewall, usually not cleaned. So I'm gonna look for that stuff. Um, I'm gonna look at the top end. I'm gonna see, is there a gasket sealer on there? Is there evidence that the gaskets have been off of there recently? Cause he's saying there's injector work that was done to it. Mm -hmm. yep. If there's evidence of that, say, okay, injectors were done recently. I'm gonna look at the, head or at the head bolts, right? See if there's any evidence like, yeah, these have been replaced. Yep. Have things been moved around? Look at the injector lines. Were those replaced with the injectors? Mm -hmm. the guy who does really good work on injectors probably replaced the injector lines. Mm -hmm. the guy who doesn't really care as much might not. Yeah. All right. Just check and make sure it's all done thoroughly. It's that little stuff. Exactly. Then the next thing I'm going to do while the truck is cold, I'm going to come over and grab the radiator hose. Simple test, right? Yep. If I can squeeze the hose, good chance the head gaskets aren't blown. I'm going to look in the coolant tank and mm -hmm. see. Is there evidence of contaminated coolant? Did the coolant get dark? Because when the head gaskets blow, you get soot in the cooling system and that soot gets carried to the overflow reservoir and that reservoir will be dark. Mm -hmm. On this truck, the reservoir is dark. Yep. My gut is the guy probably didn't replace the reservoir after the last head gasket job. Yeah. <laughs> and so we don't know for sure if, if that's an indicator or not, but I like that the coolant hose is, is collapsible. Mm -hmm. um, next thing, I'm gonna check the oil. So I have you pull the dipstick out. And what we're looking for on the dipstick is quality oil. So is it disgustingly black? Is there any obvious evidence of metal in it? Is it the right level? Right off the bat, it tells me it's full. Okay. I always like to wipe it off. Wipe and it off, check, check it. it again, right? Just get all the way in there. Basics of your oil check. Is the oil high? If the oil's high, there might be fuel in the system, which could be a cracked or leaking injector or return line underneath. We want to make sure there's no fuel in the oil. Oil's right at the full mark, a tad high, in okay. my opinion. How's it but, smell? Uh, smells, I don't smell fuel. It smells, smells like, like oil. oil. Okay. Yep. Easy enough for a basic check. So full, doesn't smell like fuel. 
good color. Let's pull the trans dip stick next. I know the engine's not running. Typically you're gonna test the, the height of the dipstick uh, with the engine running. But let's have you pull it, look at the color, mm -hmm. hold it in the light, give it a smell. Does it smell burned? It smells fresh, it's red. Uh, okay. No signs of burning or anything okay. like we'll that. We'll check the there. level later when we get the engine running, but it's cold now, so you know, good to just check it out. Um, while we're back here looking around, I'd be look for exhaust leaks. So is there any evidence of exhaust against the firewall? Is there any evidence of exhaust around the downpipe flange, mm -hmm. around the center section flange? Um, you know, anything that's going to show you, yeah, this thing is leaking exhaust. Because when we, when we start having to tear up pipes apart and start having to mess with the exhaust systems, it gets messy quick and it's not pleasant to drive. So there's an expense you're going to run into relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. um, this truck, relatively filthy on the back of the firewall, but it's uniformly filthy. Yeah. Filthy. There's no extra dirty spot. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say it doesn't sound like we have any exhaust, or it doesn't look like we have any obvious exhaust leaks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the last thing I want to look at is just general situation of the electronics under here. So we know the top end's been off this thing a few times. We know that the previous owner was into performance stuff. We know he's got a lift pump on the truck. There's some evidence of, you know, conduit re moved, replaced, tie wraps over here, kind of some loose fuel system. I mean, this is some, some janky shit over here, to be honest. Um, all these things represent risks for having to troubleshoot down the road. Exactly. So, Anytime somebody's been in a wire or unloomed a wire or anything that's hanging loose, right, yep. is, is, a, is a maybe. Mm -hmm. and it, not saying that it's necessarily bad, but it's going to add to the risk of the purchase. And before we close the hood, I'm just going to leave you with the thought that if you've looked at other used vehicles, you know to look for other things, right? Belts, pulleys, brake fluid, power steering fluid levels. This is stuff you'd look for in any gas vehicle or any other vehicle you're gonna buy. The stuff that we're talking about is, is really Duramax specific, is stuff that you should look at specifically on one of these trucks. So yeah. let's, uh, let's move on and walk around the truck, start it, talk about you know, what we're looking for as far as idle, as far as smoke quality, as far as balance rates, and the rest of the stuff. Perfect. Cool. All right, Anthony, so we were under the hood. We did the walk around, started the truck, checked it out. Mm -hmm. Now we're inside this truck place I'd never thought I'd be in my life. <laughs> and it's something. We're going to check it out, right? So uh, Just talk to me, man. Right off the bat, getting in, I noticed uh, the door didn't shut all the way. We really okay. kind of had to pull on that pretty hard. I see it's got an aftermarket head unit, um, the broken uh, vent. There's a couple, it seems like it's been around the block a couple times where it's pretty beat up right off the bat is what I'm seeing here. A couple yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, judging by the amount of black ice and empty cigarette containers in here, and I'm not sure what it was. I think it's a little pump. A little pump. Yep. Got it. All right. Uh, so stuff I'm looking for besides a little pump is I want to make sure that the four-wheel drive actuator works. I want to make sure the lights turn on. I want to make sure the switches and the controls work. Yep. So if, if the blower motor is out of it, if the heat doesn't work, if the AC doesn't work, those are major things you're going to have to spend money on, Absolutely. especially if you're driving the truck in off climate. Mm -hmm. Once we check and make sure those things work or don't work, we know how much those things are going to cost, we're going to do some diagnostics on the truck. Mm -hmm. So you've got an auto cal plugged in there. Yep. You're going to go key on. Just see if there's any stored trouble codes. I already got it prompted to display all DTCs. Okay. So I'm just going to hit OK right off the bat. PO380, PO530, 2141, 2144. OK. So couple. we've got some trouble codes. I saw a glow plug. There's no shortage of codes. Yeah, there's a few on there. Cool. So we're going to check those out and see if, you know, how big they are. The, the glow plug code shouldn't be too bad, but it's definitely something you can negotiate with them on. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think I saw a barometric pressure sensor, maybe an AC code too. A couple body control modules, yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And I yep. did notice we got the ABS and brake light on as well. Talked about a front end replacement, uh, okay. you know, tie rods, ball joints, things like that. So, you know, something else to take a look at. There's a couple yeah. lights on the dash. It wouldn't surprise me if this thing's been an accident, being that the door's tough to shut. Yep. Uh, you mentioned that this is a crew cab truck, mm -hmm. especially on extended cab trucks. Definitely check that door shut. Yep. Right? That's, <laughs> you know that life. Yes, I do. All right. Um, next thing, 
I want to check balance rates as well. Balance so, rates. you know, we can load that up on the spade or we can look on this truck comes with the CTS2. Mm -hmm. Certainly if the thing, you know, if what you're buying comes with the CTS2 or if you have a CTS2 or anything that can read balance rates, we want to check balance rates. Absolutely. All right, now that we've looked at the basics, I think it's time to start this thing up, head out on the road, do a road test, you know, check shift quality, check how it drives and, and steers and goes down the road. Absolutely. I don't know why I make this motion when I say steer, <laughs> but. Okay, so on this cold start, we're gonna look at how long it takes the truck to start. So does it crank long or does it crank for a normal amount of time? And then is there any smoke? So is there black smoke? That might be okay for you. Is there white smoke? If yes, does it smell like fuel? Does it smell like oil? Fuel can be bad injectors. Oil can be bad turbo seal or bad valve seals. So we're just looking for any excessive smoke on cold start. All right, so now that we're in the truck and we're driving along, we wanna get the feel for how the truck drives. What does the steering feel like? Does it feel loose? Does it feel tight? Is there any excessive play? Is there noise in the steering? Maybe the power steering pump's bad. Does it pull or drag to one side? Maybe it needs an alignment. Is there loose suspension feeling, right? Does it feel like it's got uh, sway bar end links bad or loose shock mounts or, you know, does the truck feel tight or does it feel loose? Because if it feels loose, you're gonna end up paying for it. Throttle response, does it go like it should? This is probably something that you know pretty well. Most guys who are listening to this video know what they expect from a truck when it goes. Is there excessive black smoke on acceleration? Is there any noise that sounds like a boost leak? Is there any noise that sounds like an exhaust leak, a squirrel under the hood? Do you smell smoke? Do you smell exhaust? The truck should smell relatively clean, right? You shouldn't be in a cab with CO2 emissions. Use the brakes. What do the brakes feel like? Are they spongy? Does it pull to one side? Does it stop well? Do they pulsate? And you're always looking for shift quality, okay, drivability. Does the truck respond? Does it go through the gears smoothly? Is each uh, clutch engagement smooth? Is there any flaring? Is there any excessive defuel? Is there any slamming? Is there anything that makes you think the trans is unhappy? If the guy letting you take it for a test drive is gonna let you roll, out and roll on it in fifth gear, you wanna do that, roll on it in fifth gear, see if the truck goes in a limp mode, right? If it goes in a limp mode, that's gonna cost you a transmission, so you wanna be aware of that. See more at our limp mode episode if you want to learn on that. All right, Anthony, we're under the truck. Let's see what this thing has to offer, man. <laughs> Let's take a look. I'm right? excited. So underneath the truck, we're looking for leaks. We're looking for leaks. We're looking for stuff that shouldn't be there and leaks. I'm going to start in the front. Okay, so I'm just going to look up underneath. Leaks, right? Awesome. Obviously, this thing's caked in oil. It looks like a lot of it's coming from the power steering assembly mm -hmm. over here. Maybe the upper oil pan. Um, I'm gonna take a light up here and look at the weep hole in the water pump, looking for any dex cool that's coming down. Mm -hmm. Water pump looks like it's in okay shape. Um, then I'm gonna go over to the corners here, look at CV boots, right? So is there anything in the CVs? Are they slinging oil anywhere? Just take a look in there. Yeah, this poke, one looks all right to me. Okay, poke your ball joints, see if there's grease in there. These things look pretty rough. Yeah, especially the top especially ones. Especially the uppers, yeah. Uh, looks like there's some front end work done to the truck. It's got sleeves on it. Do the tires move? <laughs> the tires go forward. <laughs> nice. I'm just gonna kind of grab the outside here and uh, look for play. You wanna look for play in the pitman arm assembly. So over here, Absolutely. like get under the truck and look. Yeah. Thanks buddy. Mm -hmm. Looks tight. A little bit of play, but it looks overall. Feels pretty tight. tight. Yeah. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Front carrier. It's clearly been RTV yep. more recently than not. Mm -hmm. Somebody was in there, you know. Noteworthy. Yep. See a little bit of a chunk taken out of the lower part of the fan shroud too. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. It's no secret this truck has had some hard miles. <laughs> okay. So as we're coming back, just gonna look at the U-joints. Look good. Look original. Uh, lower pan looks good. No leaks. Doesn't look like the rear mains leaking at all. Mm -hmm. I see some aftermarket trans lines. Got fresh well. trans lines. Yeah, that's nice to see there. No leaks there. I mean, it's a common. Leak point on the trans cooler and the trans lines back here. Okay. Not to see that is encouraging. As we continue to move back. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> so push on the transfer case assembly. Looks like the mounts are good, but we do have some weld and we should probably get the camera on that just to show you. It's real common to have pump rub issues on these transfer cases where the uh, internals 
rotating assembly, mm -hmm. rubs through on the case, and then you lose all the fluid, and yeah. it looks like this one has had that issue, and it looks like it's been repaired. Yes. I don't know if I trust that repair. <laughs> um, I also want to uh, draw your attention to the uh, brake lines mm -hmm. along the spot up here. in the plow trucks and the Midwestern trucks. After about 15 years, those need to be replaced. Yep. These look rusty. Uh, it's probably in your future. Fuel lines on the fuel cooler. Mm -hmm. Common leak spot. Doesn't look like they're leaking. They're up top there. Yep. Looks like we're okay. Looks like this drive shaft's been replaced relatively recently. Yeah. Got a little bit of seepage on the transfer case outlet there. But mm -hmm. Looks like that's in good shape. The truck has a fast on it. The interesting thing is that the fast mount has been tightened to the point of fracture. Uh, these fuel lines, these blue fuel lines, I mean, they're okay. They last for a little while, but I wouldn't plumb my whole fuel system with them, and I certainly wouldn't be tie wrapping them to everything. Yeah. And Because uh, this shit leaks after a while, right? Um, rust all over the fast filter. It looks like it probably hasn't seen service in a while. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And, uh, uh, traction bar mounts. Kind of making the way back. Yeah, I noticed right off the bat, traction bar mounts. Looks like uh, somebody let Helen Keller get a welder, yeah, put these bad boys on. These things are pretty rough. They are pretty rough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, go back to the back here, looking for a pinion seal leak. I don't see a pinion seal leak. That's nice. Exhaust looks like it's in decent shape. Yeah. I mean, it's got some big-ass 5-inch exhaust. Um, I don't see any black smoke blowing out of any of the joints, which is typical exhaust leaks that you're going to have to fix. Looks like the truck had a stack at one point. Yep. Hubcap, I see a hubcap in there right now. <laughs> hubcap in there. Um, shocks, not terribly rusty. Mm -mm. Still there. Yeah. Uh, good to take a little peek at the brakes. Absolutely. Rotors, not so super hot. Looks like there's a little bit of pad material left. Um, you know, that's the basics. Yeah. No leak on the rear diff. I don't know what you're expecting with this thing. Yeah. I mean, you're gonna have to soak some money in, especially up front with the power steering, mm -hmm. the oil pan. There's some care that needs to be tended to. Probably it for some sure. brake lines in yeah. the not so distant future. But uh, I mean, all in all, for an 0304 truck, that's kind of the way it goes. All right, so overall, I wouldn't say it's a particularly well taken care of truck. I mean, there's quite a few items underneath here that signal that. Yeah. Um, you're gonna be putting you know, a couple thousand dollars into it over the next couple of years mm -hmm. easily based yeah, on what I've seen. I'd agree. So we looked underneath, we did diagnostics on it, showed us some codes. Mm -hmm. uh, we looked on the inside, make sure all the controls work. Decent inside. Yeah. Body, eh, not so hot. Mm -hmm. Ride along. I mean, the truck drives well, it makes good power. Mm -hmm. If you're just looking for a hot rod rig that's gonna get you-, you have fun with it. Yeah, yeah, have fun, get you through the winter, do some burnouts dump it when it gets to be uh, too much on the maintenance side, which it looks like this guy is about to do on you, uh, <laughs> you know, that's your call. But yeah. at least you go into the purchase knowing what you're in for Absolutely. and uh, you know, knowing that it's not going to be a free ride. Yep. Cool. LB7's for the win. If you're looking at an older LB7 or LOY truck, hopefully this helps you out. Take your time. Don't get excited about a horsepower number. Look it over, put it on a rack, take it for a test drive. Watch this video before you do it. And when Santa squeezes his fat white ass down that chimney night, he's gonna find the jolliest bunch of assholes this side of the nut house.